This is the Akai MPK Mini Plus. It's a 37 key MIDI controller that gives us all the features Akai should have put on their MPK Mini Mark III. And a few more interesting features that I have to say are pretty fun to use, including an onboard sequencer and MIDI and CV ports, which makes this more than a DAW controller. It retails for $169, and today I'm going to explore all the features it offers. Let's find out if it's right for you, and one big reason the MPK Mini Plus may win you over. Now, let's get something out of the way first. This is a controller only, unlike Akai's MPK Play keyboard, which has onboard sounds. This does not, so you'll need to connect it to a computer or a hardware synth to play sounds. So let's explore what it can do. Before we get started, if you're new around here, I'm Sanjay C. I have lots of videos on music production and music gear on my channel. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. I bring you all the latest gear and a Saturday news video with free plugins and exclusive discount codes every week. I'll add a link below to the best prices for the MPK Mini Plus and links to my reviews of other keyboards you might consider. Okay, let's talk MPK Mini Plus. When I first took this out of the box, I looked for transport controls, and they're here. These controls are missing from the MPK Mini, and in my opinion was a glaring omission on that keyboard, since most keyboards in that price range have transport controls. Well, on this slightly pricier MPK, you now have play, stop, record, forward and back, and there's this sequencer button at the end as well. Before I demo that, let's talk about the key and pad feel. This is a mini keyboard, so you've got mini keys, but the added length of the keyboard means you've now got 37 keys instead of the 25 typically found on most mini keyboards. It's a few more keys than the M-Audio Oxygen Pro Mini, which is priced at $119 versus $169 for the MPK Mini Plus. Do the extra keys make a difference? Yes, they do. I'm a pianist and this gives me the right number of keys to make playing feel good, and not restrictive like 25 key keyboards do. The keys themselves feel the same as other Akai mini keyboards. Not as good as Artoria's Mini Lab, but good enough. The pads are excellent. These are my favorite pads of all mini controllers out there. Stiffness, spacing, everything is just right. On the back, you've got the standard USB port, a pedal port, standard MIDI in and out, CV and clock ports as well. These are useful when connecting a controller like this to a hardware synth, and it looks like Akai is really aiming for that. Don't forget the sequencer button. We'll check that out later in the video. Above the keys, you've got some of the typical controls found on most mini keyboards. Eight knobs and a ninth to control extra functions. Octave up, down, note repeat, ARP on and off, and dedicated buttons for scale and chord features. Akai's joystick is here, but don't really have much use for it since they've added pitch and mod wheels. Yes, they did it. You see on other versions of MPK keyboards, you're forced to use the joystick to control pitch and mod. Now you have two kind of plasticky feeling pitch and mod wheels but it's better than having to deal with the joystick. You can configure the joystick pads and other controls to do what you want in your DAW or on a hardware synth, which is nice. There's also an editor software to configure controls and also sequences. You also have those transport controls on the side, but there's lots of buttons here with either one or two functions each. The inclusion of dedicated buttons is nice because you have quick control of lots of functions without menu diving. Now I want to mention something here. Most of the features I I've talked about so far, I feel should have been included in this smaller, cheaper MPK Mini Mark III. The transport controls, the pitch and mod wheels, MIDI out. The fact that they've now included them 
in this larger MPK Plus is good news, but that comes at a higher price at $169. In fact, at $119, you can get the M Audio Oxygen Pro Mini with all those features I just mentioned and almost the same number of keys. But the MPK Plus has a bit more MIDI connectivity and the sequencer. And this is the reason the MPK Mini Plus may win you over. That price is hard to beat given the variety of features. The Arturia Keystep, which has a sequencer, is more expensive and doesn't have all the dedicated DAW control you get with the Mini Plus. The question really is, do you need all these features? So let's check out that sequencer next, and then I'll give you an overview of the DAW controls. Before I do, if you're writing songs and producing music at home, you should share them with the world. It's super easy to get your music out there using DistroKid, the sponsor of today's video. DistroKid lets you upload your music to Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, Pandora, Amazon, pretty much everywhere. Best of all, they make it really easy. Just upload your track, fill in some fields, add your artwork, and they do the rest. DistroKid also collects earnings for you when your listeners play or purchase your music. And they help you market your music with tools built right in. A hyper follow page lets you share your latest music with your friends on Facebook or anywhere you can share a link. And they can easily follow you to get notified of your upcoming releases. I've actually created two dedicated videos on DistroKid to give you all the details about how it works, how you upload, and how you get paid. You can watch that video right here. If you're ready to sign up, I'll include a link in the video description that'll give you 7% off your first year of DistroKid membership. So let's talk sequencer. Press the sequencer button and start tapping in notes. And the sequencer will cycle through and play what you tap in and then it repeats. Shift and octave plus gives you a view of the sequence on the tiny screen. Yeah, put on your glasses. But it was a lot of fun using the sequencer to get some interesting results. This is a pretty unique feature that isn't included on most MIDI controllers, and Akai has done a nice job implementing it, especially given the tiny screen. Right here, I'm triggering a drum kit in Ableton. Keep in mind, you can use this same technique with hardware synths and create and output a sequence of notes. The sequences cannot be saved to the keyboard. As soon as I unplugged the keyboard, I lost my recording. You've got two sequencers for pad and for keys. It has an eight note polyphony. I found this sequencer pretty useful when sequencing a drum beat and then playing keys along with it. You can control the MIDI output channels to make this possible. This is a handy feature for hardware synths, but I doubt I would use it in a DAW, which is my typical method for making music. So, DAWs. Let's talk about DAW control next. The MPK Mini Plus is a very capable DAW controller, now that they've added the transport controls. They have out-of-the-box settings for MPC Beats, Ableton Live, Logic Pro, FL Studio, and GarageBand. In Ableton, I can play, stop, record, and the knobs control parameters in my selected device or plugin. These are endless encoders, which I prefer. But that's about where the Ableton Live control ends. No clip or scene triggering, no mixer controls built in. Of course, you can map controls of the knobs to whatever you want in your DAW, but that requires more setup. You get similar control in other DAWs like FL and Logic. With this larger size, I really wish they had given us mixer volume control. By the way, if you use MPC Beats, this is going to give you excellent control of it. There are some additional functions on the MPK Mini Plus that are also available on the MPK Mini Mark III. Let's explore those next. You have Note Repeat. I really like this feature and many other keyboards don't have it. You've also got an onboard arpeggiator with lots of options and control, including octave, up and down, division, and swing. Great arpeggiator for sure.
They've also included chord features, and pressing shift and chord gives you access to lots of chords you can now play with one finger. The scale feature allows you to set a scale, and the MPK Plus eliminates other keys outside of that scale. It's a great way to stay in key if you're not a music theory expert. The Akai MPK Mini Plus comes with some decent software to get you started with making music, good instruments, and Akai's own MPC Beats beat making software. So what's missing? Well, mixer controls out of the box for one, but there's also another missing feature that Native Instruments and Artoria got right on their mini keyboards deep virtual instrument integration. Both Native Instruments and Artoria have excellent integration with their own software. This means you get a lot more control of Artoria's analog lab with the mini lab and complete control with Native Instruments M32. That's a major benefit for those keyboards. The Mini Lab 3 also has better keys. By the way, Artoria just released the Mini Lab 3, so check out my review of it. You can watch it right here. So let's talk about who I think the Akai MPK Mini Plus is for. Given the extra keys, I think this keyboard may be right for you if you love the layout of the MPK Mini but just want more keys. You've got the same form factor, those great Akai pads, and now more keys. Throw in the transport controls and you've got a pretty decent setup. But if those are the most attractive features to you, I strongly recommend that you check out the M Audio Oxygen Pro Mini Keyboard. Now, if you find the added sequencer and MIDI connectivity useful, particularly if you use hardware synths, then this just might be what you're looking for. It's a good all-in-one controller for a great price. If you're interested in buying the MPK Mini, I've included links to the best prices in the video description below. If you like this video, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. Keep making the music you love, and if you wanna check out other keyboard reviews on my channel, watch the videos right here. I'll see you there.